Hey guys, I want to do a quick follow-up because there's some discussion and there comes up from time to time this kind of doom and gloom thing about Nicaragua doesn't have tax treaties with any other countries, which is true, uh, that this will result in, not in all cases, but in some cases, double taxation where both countries will tax you. Now, there are ways to contrive scenarios where you'll be double taxed. Like that is plausible in a situation where you have any one country that doesn't blanket not tax anyone ever. So that is true that there's ways to contrive it if your goal is double taxation. The first takeaway is under no circumstance does anyone watching this or who will ever watch this or who will ever consider this a problem or look into this ever have to worry about double taxation. It's not going to happen, period. End of story. You need to do no more research than that. But if you want to understand why, let's dig into it. Okay, so there's two, there's a whole layers of things here, right? Lots of layers because it's not any one thing that creates the fact that there's not going to be double taxation. And so we're talking about salaries here, right? You're, you're earning an income and you could be double taxed on that, or that's the fear, right? Now there is, this is where you could get into some really complex stuff. If you had capital gains that happen in, in very certain circumstances, in theory, maybe those could be double tax. That's the most likely place where it's going to happen if you're going to contrive something. And I'd like to see someone come up with exactly how you're going to do that, where you're in a position that it's like actually going to happen. It's actually going to flow through the system. Capital gains can happen separate from other types of taxation, right? So it's it's a bit of a different thing. It's kind of like when you're taking uh, corporate profits, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It could be property profits, right? Like real estate profits. Um, but this is where, in theory, there could be some concern. But if we're talking about people who are working, right, when people are saying, I could be double taxed, my income could be double taxed, the reality is, is it can't. So let's break it down. So first of all, let's look at the Nicaragua side. One, no one who's a foreigner ever, ever, ever wants to work in Nicaragua to make money. That makes no sense. If you're starting with, but I might want to work in Nicaragua, you're already outside the realm of reason. This does not make sense. If you want to work here as a volunteer, that's different. Obviously, you don't get taxed as a volunteer, but if you're looking at being taxed on salary that you're pulling from Nicaragua, you've started from a fake starting point. I know that millions of people think that when they move to a new country, the one thing they must do is earn an income as a normal worker pulling a salary from that country. In some cases, that might make sense. It does not make sense for anyone who's watching this video and thinking, thinking about moving to Nicaragua. If you're an asylum seeker, yes, you may end up in a situation where you, you have to pay taxes while you're in Nicaragua, but you're also giving up other citizenships generally to do so. You're giving up the possibility of being taxed somewhere else. There's a lot of protections. Double taxation only happens when you have this really specific set of circumstances. Now, it does depend where you're coming from, but most importantly, in Nicaragua, the chances of being taxed on salary for a foreigner is extremely low to the point of being a negligible concern because you can't have a salary to be taxed on. This is not hard. You can't do the things that cause you to be taxed in Nicaragua. The reason you won't be taxed in Nicaragua is because you won't be pulling a salary here. I know you may want to, you may think you want to, but you don't. That is, that is an emotional reaction that we've talked about in other videos. Fix that first. And even if you want it and you can't get over wanting it, it doesn't change the fact that you can't. And if you try to and you're like, well, I'm going to do something illegal to be able to get a job. Well, you don't pay taxes when you're already doing something illegal. You're going to get deported if you try to pay the taxes. You're going to get deported if you get caught. Like, just don't break the law. Okay, so there's this statement that after 100 days in the country, you become a tax resident. This is absolutely true. You do become a tax resident. It is irrelevant. Don't listen to, don't, don't let someone bring that up as if that's an argument for anything. Of course, you're a tax resident. It goes without saying. You're living in a country for more than the half the year. Of course, you are qualified to pay taxes if there's an activity that allows you to pay taxes. But you then have to have a right to have a tax making activity. Some countries allow you to have tax making activities anytime, right? So, so for some countries, that's really relevant. But for a country like Nicaragua, that tax residency has nothing to do with your ability to become a taxable instance. In order to do that, in order to be legally able to be paid with a salary outside of extreme extreme circumstances where you're basically working for the government. And I know someone gave an example where they managed to get a job with UNAN. So first of all, it's basically a volunteer position. No one wants a job with, with doing that um, as a career. 
but in theory, okay, let's let's assume that that, that is something you wanted to do. Um, other people have said they had to do it illegally because they couldn't legally come in. Like there's a lot of gray area even on those really specific cases. So we're talking about extreme fringes as a starting point on the Nicaragua side. Then you have to, the only way to be allowed to get to a salary that we have found is you either have to become a citizen, which is generally a 12 plus year process and extremely difficult even then. We only know of two, three people uh, who've ever had it happen. Of course, it's happened to more than that, but it is extremely rare. We're not talking about normal things here. And then you also need, or you alternatively, you have to become a full investor resident. When you become a uh, resident by marriage, of mar you know, all the different types of uh, uh, a rentista, a pensione, none of those count and give you the right to work. They give you the right to bring in outside income and spend it here, but they do not give you the right to generate income here as salary. You can't be paid as a salary. You cannot act as a worker. When you become an investor, first of all, this takes a very long, detailed process to get there. Two, it is quite expensive. It's obtainable. It is not outrageously expensive, but it is not cheap. It's not something you do casual. The nature of becoming an investor resident, essentially not 100%. I understand that you could concoct a theory on a fringe case, but the reality is, is if you can become or want to become an investor resident, you are no longer possibly in a position where you would want to work as an employee for someone else at Nicaragua rates. It makes no sense whatsoever. Absolutely none. I've never heard of a proposed fringe case to make this make sense. So the reason that this exists at all as an option, and we talked about this in other videos, is that there is potentially a need when you're an investor and you have businesses here that you may need to do activities for the business that will mimic being an employee. And it's important for this rule to exist so that should someone, for example, be a restaurant owner and they jump into the kitchen and they do some of their own cooking and you likely wouldn't want to pay yourself a salary here in Nicaragua, that just wouldn't make sense for these tax reasons in reality. But you wouldn't normally want to pay yourself a salary here in Nicaragua unless you have a tax treaty that makes that guaranteed zero tax. Then you might be like, you know what, this just makes life easy. I'm going to do it. You generally are not going to want to do that because one, it is taxable in Nicaragua. So why would you voluntarily pay taxes you don't need to? And two, the reason that it exists is that uh, you need to not have someone get in trouble for doing basic work at their own business. And people brought this up with the, if I'm not allowed to work in my own business, what do you do? And if you're not an investor, if you don't have that residency, you are in a position where you jump into the kitchen and you start doing some work in your restaurant. Someone could be like, hey, I want a job working in a kitchen. You didn't have enough positions for me. And now I see a foreigner, happens to be the owner, doing the job I was turned down for because there weren't enough positions open. Well, I'm going to report you and say you're working as an employee and any income you're taking, you're not taking a salary because you're illegally not paying yourself salary because you're acting as an employee. And the government may decide to side with them and you could be in big trouble for not paying a lot of different things and most importantly, not hiring a Nicaraguan. So it's important for real investors who they want to be here, who are committed to the system, who are being checked in on or doing all those things to have protections and be able to say, look, yeah, I'm acting as an employee, not because I don't want to employ people, but I have a restaurant and sometimes owners have to get involved. And it may look like I'm acting like an employee temporarily, or maybe I actually am acting as an employee, but I'm allowed to because I've gone through this investor system and I've guaranteed that I'm creating jobs, I'm adding to the economy, I'm being watched carefully. I've done all these things to make sure that I'm not stealing a job. But if you don't go through all those things and you're taking someone's job visually, they have this potential to go after you because you're not allowed to do that. So the ability to work a job and have a salary while available to investor residents, it is completely theoretical. You will never meet an actual investor resident who has spent the money, taken the time, gone through the effort to get into that position, who then says, I don't want to take 
that money from my business, that that's failed. And I don't want to make good money working from whatever other jurisdiction is available to me. I'm instead going to take the super, super, super low, difficult and unethical salary from an Nicaraguan business instead of a Nicaraguan getting paid that and, and be happy with uh, an amount of money that I could easily make for doing less work somewhere else while contributing to the country instead of taking away from it. You're never going to find that person. It makes no sense. And if you end up in that position, very likely you're not going to be able to retain your residency because you're no longer going to be an active investor theoretically, like just from a practical standpoint. So even if you came to, if there was someone once ever who fell into this scenario and wanted to do those things rather than fix it in some other way, they likely would not be able to retain the investor residency. So it'd be a short term thing while going through a transition. So while we can theorize that double taxation could happen on the Nicaraguan side for an event like that, we're talking about an absolutely absurd and extreme case that, that while it sounds almost kind of plausible, it really isn't. Now, that's the Nicaragua side. So basically, you're never going to face a scenario on the Nicaragua side where you will be eligible for taxation, that you are tax resident, again, relevant, smoke and mirrors, misdirection. What matters is could you end up logically ever in a position where you're doing an activity that would make you have a salary and be taxable on it? And the answer is, for all intents and purposes, no, that's not possible. So let's flip it. From the other countries, wherever you're coming from, the United States for me, Canada for many of you, France, England, China, doesn't matter. So you've come to Nicaragua or wherever. Every country handles the taxation of income outside of their home country around the world differently. If you're coming from the United States, we are always taxed on our foreign income. So in theory, should we be working here in Nicaragua and actually hit a scenario where we're being uh, potentially taxed by Nicaragua? If I wanted to do this as a thought experiment and I went and took a job, which I should not do, that would be unethical. But if I went and took a job from a Nicaraguan and did that job at Nicaraguan rates, I would have to pay Nicaraguan taxes logically. I could do that in theory shouldn't, but I could. The United States would view that as part of my worldwide income, and I would have to add it to my taxes. Now, if you're an American, you get $126,000 per year as a tax credit. So yes, I would technically be double taxed, but this is purely semantics. The rate at which I'm taxed in the United States is 0%. So while both entities would tax me, the one is taxing at 0%. So we don't call that double taxation. I realize if you're trying to trick people and create doom and gloom and, and fear, uncertainty and doubt, you talk about it as a as double taxation, but when it's reality, we call it not being taxed. We say filing your taxes, but not paying your taxes, or not having taxes to pay, really. You pay what taxes you owe, those taxes are just zero. So, and you may have taxes from other things. Maybe you have investments in the United States that are making money that owe, that you owe taxes on those you would keep paying. You don't get out of your American taxes by living in Nicaragua, you get out of your Nicaraguan taxes by not having any, right? Okay, so now Canadians. Canadians have given me the most kind of doom and gloom stories and I don't know how true they are because some Canadians are like, that's not true. And a lot of them are like, it is true. And I don't know who actually knows. And it may be somewhere in the middle. But Canada definitely gives you the ability to completely break from Canada and have no taxes worldwide. But supposedly it's extremely hard to do and you sometimes out of your control. So I don't know. I'm not Canadian. I can't really speak to it. But that is something that people have as a fear. But in general, Canadians that we know do not get double tax. They come here, they live here, and they are, one, not eligible for taxes here. And two, they managed to get out of the Canadian taxes by being resident here, causing them to be completely tax free. That is the norm, right? For the majority of people that are going to be expats in Nicaragua and pull a salary and an actual uh, active income, they're going to be tax free. That is the norm for all people. Some people have to pay taxes. Not everyone gets lucky and ends up in that scenario. And there is transition time where some people keep paying. Like as an American, we don't get to do that for the first little period of time. There's a little bit where we pay our normal taxes. We don't pay any extra taxes, but we could pay the normal taxes. Um, now, if you're coming from someplace like France, this came up specifically. France does tax worldwide income as long as you're a resident in France. But if you're a resident in Nicaragua, you're not resident in France and you don't have that problem. Now, again, if you want to contrive a way to have to pay taxes in both places, you could, you could theoretically come up with a way that's really silly, really foolish, and just 
brute force your way into overly taxation, being overly taxed. That does exist. I'm not saying that it is theoretically impossible to theorize a scenario where someone could be double taxed. What I'm saying is that I don't think you will ever be able to find any human who has ever actually been double taxed or ever actually will be double taxed or has an actual scenario that they would actually end up in where they could be double taxed. They could come up with for salary, right? Maybe something for property somewhere that you end up with, the, maybe, right? Okay. But not for your income, your salaries, right? When you're, when you're getting paid. So when we're talking income tax, it's a very specific thing. <clears throat> and so you have to be careful not to jump around because like corporate taxes, those are not your taxes, right? So it's a completely different animal and you need to work with, you know, accountants and stuff to do those things correctly. But when we're talking about your income, this is relatively basic, especially for the Americans, Canadians, but for Europeans, it's not that hard either. Now, the theory was put forth that, and I've very similar to the ones about Canada. Well, you can't actually do this stuff. Canada just decides to tax you and what can you do? Uh, supposedly France does the same thing, but I know from the French government that if you look, they are super clear who gets taxed and who doesn't. And it doesn't seem to have any gray area and it doesn't seem hard at all. It's a little bit on the, uh, you know, aggressive taxation side, but why wouldn't it be? They're a country and they want to make money and they're struggling with their coffers. So they're not, you know, flush with cash and just being like, whatever, do your thing. No, they want to get their, their tax revenue. They're a tax heavy country. So they have to consider those things. So let's look at what the French rules are and how it would apply to someone in this scenario. Okay, so the statement was made that France will basically tax you regardless of anything else. But here are the rules. And this is straight. I'm reading the French government website. So in theory, this should be pretty darn accurate. Uh, determining if your tax resident is in France. You only have to pay taxes in France if you are a tax resident. Uh, so if you have, if one of the following criteria is met. The first, you have your household there, or if you do not have a household, it is the location of your main abode. This is pretty straightforward. And if your household is in France, obviously you are resident in France. People would refer to that as French, French residency. So that just tracks with the English. It doesn't really require an explanation unless you had a scenario where you wouldn't consider that tax resident. Then you might have to say, whoa, you're actually not tax resident, even though you're resident there. Oh, wow, that's really surprising. But it's not. It's just the straightforward thing. Uh, you do not have a household. The location of your maid abode will be established based on your actual presence in France, meaning like you have an apartment and that's where you actually live. Oh, wow, pretty straightforward. If you live in Nicaragua, you don't live in France. This isn't hard. If you have your household in France, if you, you have your household in France, if you live there most of the time and permanently with your spouse or civil partner or alone, uh, you have, this is another point, you have a professional activity in France as a primary occupation if you devote the majority of actual time to it. Now, majority of actual time seems a little bit of a weird determination because no one puts the majority of their time into a job. Maybe I do, but normal people do 40 to maybe 60 hours a week. The majority would technically be 85 hours a week. That can't be what they actually mean, but maybe they mean out of this compared to other activities, but if you wanted to negate that, you would just become a YouTuber and put in 100 hours a week on that, and then there's no way for your occupation in France to be your majority. It's a really weird definition that they use, um, and so, yeah, but they call it the center of your economic interest is in France. So, so this from a professional standpoint um, is pretty straightforward, right? But if you're doing that work in France and you're taxable in France, no problem. Right. So, yes, you're going to be taxed in France. That, I think, goes mostly without saying if you're French, because obviously this probably doesn't apply uh, to to someone who's not a French. Sit well, no, that probably applies to everyone. It, you'd have to pay the taxes in France. Um, but if you're doing your work in France, you expect to pay taxes in France. But when that money comes to Nicaragua, it's non-taxable because it's not income. Right. It's money you already have. So it's um, it, from Nicaragua's perspective, I'm not making an opinion here. I'm telling you what, how it works. So they, there's only one chance to, to tax here. You would be taxed. This would get you away from the zero taxation thing. So seriously reconsider working remotely for France. Definitely. But it just means that France is not a great place to work. It doesn't have as nice of an environment as other places. So yeah, do what you can to get yourself away from France, but that is not a major problem. You're being taxed once in a very predictable way. Um, but there's absolutely crystal clear, black and white, no possibility of taxation in Nicaragua when you do this. And this is what we talk about when people need jobs, so you're working remotely, 
this is what we're talking about, right? Working professionally in France while living in Nicaragua. Yeah, unfortunately for French people, you're going to be paying taxes of some sort. But if you did the same thing from the US or Canada, Canada, you'd pay no taxes, assuming you went through the, the residency thing. And for the United States, you would pay taxes, but only beyond $126,000 per year per person in your household. That's not exactly merged together, but if each, each of you gets your own set, so you could each have a job making 126,000 on remote, at zero tax. Beyond the 126000 yes, you would pay tax as an American, but you would never pay, whether you're Canadian, American, French, anywhere in the world, you do not pay Nicaraguan tax. Nicaragua has no tax treaties anywhere in the world to create a double taxation. And that's what would be necessary since Nicaragua has no means of taxing your, and no, no laws for, right? That's what I mean by means, taxing activity abroad. They do not tax your worldwide income ever based on your residency in Nicaragua. So that makes double taxation awfully hard to come up with. Uh, and then also a person who has more income from French sources than income from foreign sources, therefore has a center of activity in France. So that's just if you like did uh, a whole bunch of things, there's, there's ways to create France as your um, income source. The thing that is always left out when we're talking about double taxation is it doesn't matter whether you could be single taxed somewhere else. You must be single tax somewhere else in order to create a scenario for double taxation. But in none of these situations is it logical that you would ever create a an additional taxation um, uh, scenario where the income from uh, Nicaragua would exist. You would not be working a job in Nicaragua. First of all, you wouldn't be working a job in Nicaragua. That doesn't make sense. So any example where someone starts with, well, if I have a job in Nicaragua, automatically misdirection. That's not a real thing. Not going to happen. The second thing, that you have a job paying taxes abroad and you're going to have another side job, a side hustle in Nicaragua, couldn't be even less likely, right? Like that's crazy. You actually have income, but you're going to waste some of your precious extra time doing a job that pays nothing compared to the jobs you, you have abroad and then have to pay tax on it. No, you're not going to do that. It does not make any sense at all. But yes, if you're trying to contrive a false narrative to make people worry about taxes, absolutely you can contrive something, but it doesn't make any sense in the real world. Now, depending on the country you're coming from, of course, you have different scenarios for everyone. We're just giving some examples that are common here. Most of the EU, the US, Canada, under normal circumstances, you're going to be remaining generally tax-free entirely once you've made the actual transition. Over time, everyone has a unique scenario. You're likely to have some amount of tax somewhere, but the amount that you generally end up getting as a tax reduction or tax-free is normally really large. I've never heard of a scenario where anyone didn't have to voluntarily, and I mean this literally, uh, work at paying single taxation. Uh, I've never heard of anyone having to worry about double taxation. I've never heard about any realistic, uh, uh, any actual uh, real world double taxation concern that has ever arisen. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that it could never happen. But the idea that it's something that you have to worry about is not true. It is not. It is never something that you, as someone watching this video, will ever have to worry about. Mathematically, that's not going to come up. It is not something that any normal person is going to have to worry about. And it's not something that any person we know about has known about. If you know someone who actually lives here and actually did work that actually made sense, that wasn't volunteer or just to prove a point, that ended up somehow being taxed twice on their income from their work where they did labor and they had to pay double taxation, we really want to hear about it. How did that happen? What set of things? And was it something they actually had to pay or did they just not know that they needed to inform someone that they were not uh, eligible for that tax? Of course, you can voluntarily pay taxes. That's not being taxed. That's that's volunteering. It's a donation. So let me know if you know someone who's ever had this happen. But really importantly, this is said a bit on the show that people say, right, oh, but but you're going to be double taxed. Or, or uh, yes, there's people who don't, but there's lots of people who do. It's not accurate. It is only a theory that someone may end up being double taxed. It is not a realistic concern. It is not the real world. It is not what real people face or have to worry about when we're talking about your income. If we're talking about other things, every individual scenario is going to have to be evaluated based on so many factors. It gets really complex. But know that 
Being tax resident in Nicaragua is an absolutely meaningless thing. The only reason it exists is not to make you pay taxes. It designates that for your first six months here, you do not pay taxes. That's not exactly the same thing. And it is not something that causes your activities to become taxed because you can't have taxable activities until long, long after your tax resident. So it's completely meaningless. Normal people cannot work anyone realistically in a scenario where you would want to have labor that would be taxed you can't be. So that alone is what creates the scenario where all the other things, all the tax rules are secondary to the taxable activity that you actually have to determine before you start wondering what tax rules would apply to the available taxable activity. All right, thanks for joining me. This is not the show for today. We've got one coming up later. This is an extra episode that I'm putting together because I wanted to get this information out there. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys tomorrow.